Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And before you listen to this episode, I just got to let you know, I need you to stop what you're doing. Go to blkrenaissance.com, and I need you to shop for the culture. That's right. Anytime you use the promo code LLC20 at Black Renaissance Clothing's website, you will get 20% off your order. Off rip. No questions asked. So do me a favor and do it for the culture. Peace. Hey, this is KJ, and I have a question for you. When was the last time you got something nice for yourself? <laughs> That's what I thought. So why not visit www.theblurredsyndicate.com and get something that will help you express who you really are. They've got shirts, mugs, purses, mouse pads, and even aprons for the grillers of the family. So if you're a fan of anime, pro wrestling, or hell, even the Golden Girls, the Blur Syndicate has got you covered. Also, if you use the code LLC20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order. So what are you waiting on? I got mine. Come get yours. And remember to join the BS. Hey, this is Butter Fly of Power Lines Poetry here to let you know anytime I feel good, I have to look good. So you have to listen to me. Make sure you go to gurudesigns.com. Use a three instead of an E. The website is great. So you can get something for yourself. And then she makes custom clothes for men too. And guess what? I got a promo code for you. Use 20 slash 20 and it'll get you 15% off of any order, $25 or more. You can't beat that. Go to gurudesigns.com. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest be coming through, jumping knowledge or honor. You get a beaker to front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. Moreover, success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like bulges. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll. Well, we'll be on a whole different vibe. We like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted so you really can see us like Stevie Wonder waking up with his eyes closed. Yeah, got the kind of flow that rock the boat. All my 16s are pounds of dope. And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic, then grab some rope. Matter of fact, better grab some hope while you at it. We keep it live, it's time to tune in. Turn up the sound on what you're using. It goes so hard, I think it's bruising. The show is 2020, no need to zoom in. Yeah. I, I always felt that the media is the biggest shot clock in the background of every relationship um especially with social media now oh yeah with everything being in the background and you know twitter has become the new bible (laughs) because look how often we share a random quote uh twitter quote like it's gospel uh i remember so many different relationship debates through Twitter conversations, uh, i.e., uh, a, a man doesn't need uh, a year to find out if he wants to marry you or not. Well, no one's like what three months, six months, right away. Uh, bruh, I. Uh, what's what's another one? Um, uh, women shouldn't want to be stay-at-home wives. Uh, what's another one? It's it's so many. It's like every week there's a new standard. Of what Honestly, a marriage should be. I'm seeing a lot of the dominant women um, choosing submission conversation. Like, I'm like, okay. It's, and I, I'm not on Twitter, so I, that, it, it's always Facebook. But Facebook is just like. It's the pipeline. Pipeline, yeah. And it's like, they people shouldn't want to have a 50-50 relationship. Like, um, that's mm. not appropriate a man should lead and there's nothing wrong with a dominant woman but she's got to be able to trust you and want to submit and i'm like everybody's relationship ain't supposed to look like that what one way to do it what where did we stray from that It, it seems like when it comes to individuality with ourselves we encourage everyone to be themselves right 
if we're mm-hmm. telling everyone, well, let me say this. In theory, yes. In theory, In we're, theory. We're, we're telling everyone to be themselves, but conform to buy their shit. If we're telling everyone to embrace being different, why can't we embrace every marriage being different? Why does there because, have to be a uniform marriage? Because 90% of communication, especially through media, is like a double bind. Um, that's a that's a communication theory term, but a double bind is basically what we know as damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm. Mm. Um, and you you see it a lot out there, but media's d- goal is to influence, <laughs> capture and influence, capture and influence. So it doesn't matter what they're capturing. It doesn't matter what they're influencing. Some people are going to try to influence you to be this way. And then of course there's going to be another media that's influencing you to be that way. And they're both equally doing it Mm. (laughs) at the same time. So there is the standard that the 1950s housewife is like the ideal at the same time that being a boss bitch is also the ideal. And they are for different people. That part. Now, that I think that's my main issue with these arguments. The arguments are happening, mm-hmm. but it seems that one side is for themselves, but tr- are trying to discredit the other mm-hmm. in the same statement. And I feel like that's that's what. Yeah, the yeah. way I approach therapy, and I let my clients know straight off the bat, is I don't believe in right or wrong. I don't believe in good or bad. I don't believe in normal. I believe that everybody is doing the best that they can with what they think they have at any given point in time. And I don't give a damn what you do as long as it is both functional and sustainable. Those are the two things that I will I focus on. Functional and sustainable. Functional meaning, does it work for you? And sustainable meaning, can you maintain it in a healthy way? Because if that looks like you standing on your head and quacking like a duck three hours out the day, then so be it. I don't give a damn. I don't have to live with the consequences of those decisions. You do. So as long mm. as you're living with them and you're you're able to maintain your life health in a healthy way and it's working for you, quack the fuck like <laughs> go ahead. Does that mean you have five wives? Yeah, sure, go ahead. If you can maintain it in a healthy way and it works, sure. <laughs> you know, if that means you live alone with eighteen cats, if that means you have two husbands and a girlfriend, if that means <laughs> you. Adopt a village. I don't give a shit. I don't have to live with that consequence. You do. Mm. Can you afford three women, two husbands, and a cow? Then have it. (laughs) I like cows. I like cows too. Have it. You know what I mean? Nobody can tell me what works best for me. I have to figure that out on my own. And I'm, I can do whatever I'm grown enough to live with the consequences of. And that means the good and the bad. You can cheat. There will be natural consequences to that. Can you live with them? Mm. You can have a child out of wedlock. There will be natural consequences to that. Can you live with it? Does it matter to you? Some people don't value marriage. Some people don't value the political institution of marriage. Some people don't value the religious institution of marriage. They're not religious. So those impositions that other factions like place on them, like you can't do X, Y, Z because God says it's bad or because it breaks the law. Some people don't give a damn. (laughs) Right. So they're not living under that same constraint that you are. And it's not about that. It's about can you live with it? If you kill a man, you may think you're justified. You will probably go to jail or you might get killed back. Is it worth it? Can Mm. I reasonably stop you? (laughs) No. (laughs) But let's think this through. What are the consequences and can you live with those? Right. It may not be what other people would expect to hear from me as a therapist, but I 100% believe it. It also really it really prevents me from imposing my own standards and expectations on my clients because I'm doing what I think is best for my life. I my goal is not to put that on them; it's to help them figure out what's best for theirs. 
Shit. Damn, Mari. You kicking ass today, dude. <laughs> um, okay. Shit, I can't I can't even like ask a follow-up. You made that succinctly clear. Like Crystal, you you damn good. Um, we're gonna make sure we I'm gonna get a business card from you. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. But yeah, that is that is really, really important. Like at least for me. What is a a gem? And when I say gem in quotes, I mean, you know, those nuggets of wisdom that you feel that are, I'm, I'm going to give both. And if you have an example of both, that'd be great. Uh, a gem that is ignored and a gem that is misinterpreted. So when I think about gems like are ignored or misinterpreted, I think about the ones that are well known. And I don't know if any of the ones that I'm thinking about are well known. I actually keep a lot of little mini quotes by my desk just to keep up with stuff. Um, my favorite personal mantra is, uh, besides um, everyone's doing the best they can with what they think they have at this moment, I always say what they think they have because it mm. leaves room for the things that we don't always see. Mm. A lot of people have options that they're not aware of because they don't know how to move and shift and look at it from a different perspective. And it, I love that. I love that one a lot because it helps build empathy for people, other people, as well as for yourself. Like when you look back at a situation, you're like, I wish I would have did that differently. I'm like, you couldn't have. You did the best that you could with what you thought you had at that moment. Mm-hmm. Nobody. I really, really believe that. Let's let's not use all or nothing thinking. Ninety five percent of people <laughs> are not actively trying to fuck their lives up. Mm-hmm. They may be short sighted and um, trying to get what they want to get in that moment without thinking about the consequences. But of the few things in front of them, they're like, OK, based on this moment in time, this makes sense. And it had a negative consequence. <laughs> you know? But they're genuinely trying to do what they can do to get through whatever they're in. And that gives me compassion for them. When people show up and it's like, my life's fucked up and it's not working. I'm like, yeah, but you did whatever you thought worked. Something that worked before and isn't working now. Something someone you trusted told you would work that isn't working now. Let's just assume there was a reason that you're doing the shit that's fucked up now. <laughs> and move past it and do something different. Because I'm not angry at you for that fucked up decision. I assumed it was the best one you could see at that moment. We'll just move on from there, right? Um, the other one, this was for my own personal, especially when it came to relationship. Everyone is entitled to what they like, even if it's not me, even if it is. Whoa. Say that again. Everyone is entitled to like what they like, even if it's not me even if it is. I'll be the first to say I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but I'm somebody's shot of whiskey. <laughs> you know what I mean? And some people like whiskey more than I do. Mm. There's traits about myself that I wouldn't consider desirable, but somebody else desires them. And they're allowed to like what they like. And I think that's beautiful. That, that just blew my mind. The fact that someone, the way we... Being a guy, I'm always trying to ensure that my mate, whomever I'm with, and I'm sorry if I'm internalizing on on this, no, but I can't fine. help but do it. Um, I always want you to feel as if you're beautiful to me because you are. But that goes beyond the physical beauty. That goes into like the inner you. So what you may not like about you physically, oh, I got ashy elbows. Well, I like your ashy elbows. Mm -hmm. Oh, I sometimes tends to, to close up when it comes to communication, but I come back later. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that you come back later. Wow. The power in that, mm -hmm. it's so reassuring. It's inviting to be more open even. Mm -hmm. 
shit. Excuse me. I just had a, a I don't know if you heard it, but my brain exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I had made a post on my personal Facebook a couple of years ago. It was like everything that anyone has ever told me they loved about me has ended up being the exact thing they told me they couldn't stand. Mm. And that was a blow to my ego for a long time. Um, I love that you're so smart. You have your shit together. You have your degrees. You got your, you know, your therapist and all this other stuff. And then that turns around into you think you know everything. You always got some shit to say. You think you better than me. You know mm. what I mean? You never have time. I'm like, mm. this is the flip side of the same fucking coin. Mm. You know, my independence is a beautiful thing to a new person. And then it's a bane of somebody's existence when I don't let them do what they want to do in my space. Oh, boundaries. That's you know, what you're saying. You're very eloquent. You're very, you can, you, I love the way Ooh. you always can see another side of it until it's, why can't you ever just like answer the question? Like, why is it always got to be somewhere in the middle? You can't just say yes or no. No, I can't. Mm. You know, everything's a shade of gray for me. That's part of seeing all of perspectives. Everything makes sense in context. So you can't, rabbit hole me into agreeing with you with yes or no questions because I'm never going to answer yes or no. That's frustrating. <laughs> I'm aware. Right. You're really affectionate. Why are you so clingy? Well. Yeah, I'm <laughs> consistent. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? My, my mm. strengths are also my flaws. And some people like them. Some people don't. <laughs> Hmm. I got to be the one who lives with it, though. Everything I do is a cultivation, is a choice. For every plot I got in my garden, you know, I chose these particular flowers. And because I chose these particular ones, there's no room for those. I get you. But this is my garden. And right. I pick this shit. <laughs> Flaws and all. Whoa. I'm just looking for the person who likes it, too. <laughs> right, right, right. Huh. Damn. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like people don't fully, given what you're saying, you know, people say they want someone they can grow with. Mm -hmm. Do you think they are under underthinking what it means to grow with someone? Because the reason I ask that is because when I hear growth, and this is just me, when I hear growth, I think potential of change mm -hmm. and potential of staying the same. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I know that is because I've reflected on 30-year-old me versus 20-year-old me. Versus ten year old me, <laughs> so she ain't no shit. No, <laughs> no she, <did. laughs> she ain't no shit. No, <laughs> you know. So, do you think when people say I need someone I can grow with, do you think there is a distinct difference in what they are saying and what is actually heard and what is meant? Um, uh, yes, there is a difference. Um. I know for a fact there was a difference for me. Because at one point I I said I wanted somebody I could grow with, right? And what I was thinking was somebody who had mostly had their shit together, like I mostly had my shit together and we just build from there. And then somebody pointed out to me that like that the nigga down the street that ain't got shit is somebody technically you could grow with. He got a lot of space to grow. <laughs> mm. He got a lot of space to grow. Do you want to deal with that though? No. Mm. No, I do not. I don't want to deal with somebody that's ain't got what I consider as the basics. Now, did I ever explain what those things were? No. I thought that was understood. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what you mean you ain't got X, Y, Z? Like, is it, that's just a basic part of adult functioning, right? Everyone knows that, right? Everybody does not know that. 
what you are willing to deal with. And this, this goes back to the standards and expectations. Yeah. Um, yeah, my standards were real low before. <laughs> I expected people who started off down here to somehow because they got with me to meet me up here. Mm. You said this is what you wanted. This is where I'm at. Meet me here. And they can't because <laughs> they're here. And I didn't want to come down here with them to help them go there. Right. For me, that's not growth. It would be for them. They could grow with me. I can't grow with them. And not for a long ass time. <laughs> I was like, oh, mm. oh, shit. You're not as good as a communicator as you thought you were either. Mm. <laughs> Two-way street. Two-way street. You know, right. I think a lot of people have this expectation that they're going to meet somebody who's on their level or above, who's going to see their potential as a good thing, and they're going to keep climbing. But then a lot of people are not trying to meet somebody on their level or below to help them grow to that point. But if one person's always here and one person's always here, somebody's always going to have to be reaching down while someone's always trying to reach up. That's true. These don't want to reach down. These are trying to reach up. <laughs> Damn. So what do you recommend? Is it a matter of recognizing that and adjusting your sights or adjusting what your expectations are? I think it's adjusting expectations and recognizing what are needs and what are wants. Mm. I want somebody who's available all the time. That would be great. I need somebody who's going to communicate with me. Mm. So ideally, yeah, you have all the free time and it comes at the same time that I'm free and we like all the same shit, <laughs> you know, and we want all the same things. Yeah, that would be nice. But I rather, I, not rather, I need someone who can talk me through the disagreements. Like we can actually sit down and communicate what their point of view is, what my point of view is, you know? I don't need somebody around as much as I need somebody who's physically affectionate when they are around. Like, those are things I learned over time. Mm. I use a lot of metaphors if you haven't found out, but one of the other ones I use is relationships are like dancing in a minefield. Um, Cause ideally if you're dancing, it's free and it's fun and it's comfortable and you're focused on the person and you're engaging and you're following and leading at the same time. It's beautiful, but y'all got shit buried under the ground. <laughs> mm. You don't always know where those minefields, like those minds are in that minefield. Hopefully you're with somebody who's done some of their work. They stepped on some of their minds. They put a flag up and say, Hey, right here. So you can dance between them, but not no. everybody's done their work and not everyone's, mark their minds and when you're dancing with a new person you're gonna step on some shit mind sweeper mm -hmm. some people step on a couple of minds and they start building up armor they start blocking themselves off they start making it really fucking hard to continue dancing because it's scary to step on minds all the fucking time it is but yeah if you want to dance with that person. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. If you want to dance with that person, you can't do that. You can't block yourself off. You can't run away. You can't shut down all the communication. You can't decide you're not going to move anymore from this one spot. You can't stop growing. You can't stop dancing. You have to keep trying. And sometimes they'll step on yours. Sometimes you'll step on theirs. Sometimes you'll step on your own. And you're like, okay, so what do we want to do? Do I want to cast them away because they keep triggering my minds or do I want to mark them and keep trying? Mm. So we don't do this again. So we eventually get to a point where we can actually dance. Fuck. Shit. You know, I've heard the phrase and I, and I, I didn't understand uh, before, but I, I used to hear this phrase. Um, I'd rather stick with you because I don't feel like starting over, mm -hmm. you know? And you describing the minefield 
now makes me understand the plight women have with why they stay with some of the more familiar mates versus pursuing someone that could potentially be more healthy. Because in my mind, as a guy, I'm like, well, guys, you're awesome. Guys will always line up at the gates. But for every one good guy, there's probably 11,000 fuckboys with a yep. bunch of minds and you yep. don't want to keep getting hurt. Yep. And there's some that will step on your minds, even if they're marked and just keep. Ooh. They keep tagging them. And I'm like, it, I, it, this is what I'm finding. The older I get, <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. 30 years old and I am single. I'm a black woman with a professional degree in my own career. The older I get, the more minds I've stepped on and flagged, the more I try to communicate up front. Mm -hmm. This is what triggers me. This is what bothers me. This is what I know about me. Let me say that up front. <laughs> I get men that are like, whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You a lot. I'm like, well, I could just not say something and let you run into them and we both get hurt. Or I could be mm -hmm. honest up front <laughs> right. and scare you off. That's fun. Those are fun options. <laughs> or I could go back to someone who's already learned where they all are. Even though mm -hmm. we're not going to grow past this point. Damn. That's so but, sad, bro. Yeah. We're <laughs> fun. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little dark for like half a second there. Damn. That fucking blows, bro. Mm -hmm. And I know it's the same thing for guys, but we don't, we don't, I'm not saying we don't see it that way. We just don't verbalize it that way. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all also have the, the princess and the fairy, I mean, like, Prince fairy tale, like mm -mm. this concept that just keep trying. Sometime at some point, their person will find you. Y'all are the ones doing the finding. You get to make the decision. <laughs> um, we we get the instead of that, the Prince Charming will find you. We get um, God will send you a wife, <laughs> or there's plenty of the fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. Just keep going. Uh, women outnumber men. So she out there. You just got to look for. Um, That's interesting. See, I've never heard these. Oh, yeah. We, we get them. But we we cast them aside because for every, and I, I don't talk about this much. We have family members, men. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm just going to speak from personal experience on this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to probably get in trouble. Um, I have men that just were older were married and they just flat out tell me don't get married yeah it's miserable like don't uh-uh you young enjoy being young don't have kids don't get married so at some point when you like 30 40 <laughs> before you die and you need someone to take care of you you can always reproduce if that's what you want to do you could find somebody when you older enjoy being young and right. where as we over here like you got to find them quick because the old yes <laughs> the most shit they come with I'm 30 to find a person within a, a reasonable age range that isn't married, mm -hmm. doesn't have a bunch of kids, potentially by a bunch of different people who also has a similar education range because that's important to me. Not because I think that you have to have a degree, but because I find that people who have gone to school or at least had lots of life experiences can teach me something. And that's important to me. Um, so those things and actually wants marriage and wants kids <laughs> mm -hmm. and isn't doing so recklessly. I'm like, okay, so there's like two, <laughs> there's two left. Where mm -hmm. are they? <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to be honest with you. Um, guys, we have those, um, but amongst each other, um, when, when I'm among, a general populace, you'll get some pretty vague things. Yeah. Nothing that's uh, revealing to us, like personally, inwardly. We'll be like, oh, she got to know, you know, some sports. She got to be into this. This is just really blase shit, bad bullshit. But your best friends, your, your, your circle, mm -hmm. they'll know 
what you really like, you know? Yeah. Um, they'll know your weaknesses, should I say. Um, for instance, uh, I, <laughs> I have a thing for women who are shorter than me. Mm -hmm. Always have, always will. Um, but intellectually, I also have a thing for, uh, and not a lot of people know this, I require affirmations because with my anxiety, yeah. I second guess a lot of steps. So acts of service and words of affirmation. Big, big one and two. Yeah. Big one and two. Mine are words of affirmation, quality time and physical touch. Mm. And the other two aren't so, it's not that they're not there. When most people haven't taken the five love languages quiz, you can take it, it's online, just search five love languages quiz, but uh, they'll give you a percentage. And yes. it's not that I don't like gifts and it's not that I don't like acts of service, but because I'm very independent, <laughs> like I don't need you to give me anything and I don't need you to do anything for me. I need you to be there. I yes. need you to hold me and I need you to tell me nice things about myself. <laughs> because I do have high anxiety and depression as well. So mm. they make sense and they have changed based on where I was at in my life at that moment. I'm glad you said that. Um, I think three years ago, I took the test for the first time, three or four years ago. And physical touch, what was it? Physical touch was like down there at the bottom with, no quality time, excuse me, was down there at the bottom with gifts. Gifts is like, nothing to me like if it could be a decimal point i'm pretty sure my gifts would be a decimal um and that's that's the reason uh the reason for that is due to trauma as well uh mm -hmm. for me because i'm used to receiving gifts under conditions yeah or like like i did this bad thing to you here's this nice thing as a result just get over it get that or or Hey, I this is something this I, thing. I need you to do something for me. And the worst kind of that is the kind that's nonverbal. Yeah. The the kind that, you know, I, oh, I just thought about you here. And then a year later, hey, you remember when you blah, 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 blah. I did that for you. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And Holding it over your head. Yeah. Yes. And when that comes from a parent. Yep. That's hard. Uh, still trying to fight that demon, man. Still trying well, to find the thing there. about it is that's interesting because I've given you a gift before with well, the peach cobbler, I guess. Yes. And you were like, ah, <laughs> yes. And I think that's the thing is like, it makes a difference when you're safe. Yes. When you know it's not coming with an attack, when you know it's not coming with a condition, like everybody likes all of these five love languages, but they're not safe with all of them. Yes. Yes. I, I was reading a statement and uh, it was so true. The, the more I thought about it, they were saying your love language order is just in response to the trauma that you received as a kid. There's um, an article that I was reading recently about hate languages. and Basically, it's just the opposite. So Ooh. if your love language is words of affirmation and your hate language is unkind, cruel words, verbal attacks, name calling. Those are because love languages are so important to you. Doing the opposite of that is so much more painful. Not mm. getting a gift is not as a big deal for you because gift giving is not one of your top love languages. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But for me, quality time being so important uh, than having someone who never makes time for me or is always distracted when they're with me, mm. that hurts way more. Why would you do that? If this, you know this is mean, this means something. That's where that little T trauma comes in. When mm. you have those consistent like digs, like gift giving was probably something that was really important to you until it was used against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Physical Very touch. Nice. If you love hugs and tender touches, and not just necessarily sexual. A lot of people think it is, but like, and then you've been physically abused. You've been hurt. You've been pushed. You've been slapped. You've been you know, or opposite had all physical touch withdrawn as punishment, isolated. Yes. That's trauma. <laughs> Ooh -wee. I'm rocking. Sorry. Uh, ooh -wee. Okay. You're speaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I can see that. And not to turn this into a therapy session, but um, because I would have to pay you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that happens. That okay, so this is go back to like everything about me that people like they end up hating. I've had too many people be like, for a therapist, you don't listen. Like you don't da 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 da. And I'm like, that's not true. It's just you don't pay me. I got off work. <laughs> and go. My clients have 45 minute sessions. We are two hours into bullshit. <laughs> you ain't paid me not a nan. You know what I mean? This right. version would be you getting right now. Most of my clients wouldn't get because 45 minutes in, the conversation's done. I can mm. hold my patience for 45 minutes. Two hours in, though, and you done called me out my name and I can't just click off the camera. You might catch an attitude. Mm. Now, if you pay me, though, I promise I'm going to be on my best behavior. See, and that's <laughs> what we need. That's what we require. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm so, going to stop the recording here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to hit in. But um, before I do, um, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to get in contact with you specifically, um, what would be the best way to reach out to you? Mm, professionally, yes. I work with BetterHelp. That is the only platform that I'm working with right now. If you look, uh, you told me not to do work, but this is the fastest way. View my site, um, betterhelp.com slash, I think it's forward, forward slash, R-E-L dash Bryant, um, A-R-I-E-L-L-E dash -L -L -E B-R-Y-A-N-T. You'll find me. Um I'm not always open to clients, but if you reach out to the site, if you're interested, it's a subscription-based uh, platform, so you mm. don't have to have insurance or anything like that. But if you really want to work with me, reach out to the platform, and even if I'm not accepting clients, they'll shoot me a message if I want to add anybody new. And then I usually accept all referrals or requests because awesome. I'm assuming there's a reason. <laughs> right, right. Um, well, I absolutely enjoyed this. I had set a hard limit for myself for one hour and we went over five minutes, but <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, Cause I know we're both adults and adulting is hard, um, mm -hmm. but I love you. Love you. Love you. One million. It is this super was... mutual. And I'm really excited for what this turns into. You're great at your job. You better stop. I told you affirmations do something to me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That being said, this has been Sir. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Bye, y'all. Hey, this is Mystique. This is Mr. Everlasting. And this is the safe word. Safe word. Y'all make sure y'all join us every first and third Friday of the month. Every month. We are in season three. Season three. Y'all already know what it is, man. Tap in.